where did this war in Ukraine come from? This war has been brought about by the arrogance of the U.S. State Department. 400 years ago, Ukraine was split up between Poland, Russia, and the Muslim Ottoman Empire. About half of the country was uninhabited, because if you tried to settle, the Muslim raiders would ride up, kidnap, and sell Ukrainians into slavery. In the 1700s, Russia conquered the whole region and settled the parts that were uninhabited. They conquered the Crimea and the parts that were controlled by Poland. Later, the borders of Ukraine were created by Lenin after his Bolshevik Revolution. Many parts of eastern Ukraine were settled by Russians. They speak Russian and even call themselves Russian. When the Soviet Union fell, they used the borders created by the communists. Therefore, a large part of the eastern Ukrainian population is pro-Russia and the western part hates Russia. Then, the Americans came and made everything worse. In 1990, the two Germanys united and the Americans promised that they would not expand NATO any further east. But as soon as the Soviet Union collapsed, the Americans broke their promise and let in Poland, Hungary, and the Czech Republic into NATO in 1999. Bulgaria, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Romania, Slovakia, and Slovenia joined NATO in 2004, and Albania and Croatia joined in 2009. This seriously upset Russia because NATO is an alliance created for one purpose, to fight Russia. For the last 15 years, the U.S. has been agitating for Ukraine to join NATO because Ukraine and Belarus are the only countries left separating Russia from NATO countries. Following Ukraine's independence from the Soviet Union in 1991, Sevastopol became the principal base of the Ukrainian Navy. A lease agreement between Ukraine and Russia allowed the Russian Black Sea Fleet to continue to be stationed there as well. After Russia occupied and annexed Crimea in 2014, it terminated the lease agreement claiming that it no longer applied, as the region was now Russian territory. During the Ukrainian Revolution of 2014, CNN claimed that they overthrew a dictator to restore democracy. This is a lie, in line with all the other lies perpetrated by the U.S. government. The Ukrainian President Poroshenko in 2014 was democratically elected but the Americans were unhappy when the Ukrainian president started to pursue more pro-Russia policies. When Ukrainians started protesting against these policies, the CIA and the American media gave them support. It was all a stunt to make a violent coup d'etat look like a popular uprising. It was claimed that a dictator was massacring civilians. The Americans continued to pursue and force the Ukrainian president to flee the country. Here we now see Poroshenko on a CNN interview. U.S. concerned Kyiv could fall to Russia within days. Of course, a new government was installed with Zelensky. The new president was an actor and stand-up comedian and in fact playing the role of a president on a hit TV show called The Servant of the People. Zelensky was more eager to serve the U.S. interests. This is of course the government that paid hundreds of thousands of dollars of bribes to Hunter Biden, 
just to name one corrupt incident. Some parts of Ukraine did not go along with the U.S. coup, and they fought back by turning to Russia. For the past eight years, the U.S. had plenty of chances to make compromises and agree to keep Ukraine out of NATO. It could have decentralized so that both ethnic Ukrainians and ethnic Russians could be happy. But the U.S. never wanted peace in Ukraine. Peace does not serve the U.S. interests. Russia is now fed up, and here we are. If anybody is to blame for this war, it must be blamed on the deep state. The insane elites in the military-industrial complex are putting the whole world at risk of starting World War III. Technically, the war in Ukraine is all but over because the Russians have pushed all the way to the Dnipro River, which is the largest river in Ukraine, separating the country into the eastern and western parts. This was a very quick, effective, strategic strike. There is nothing the U.S. can do. However, there is going to be great impact on the whole world because of what happened in Ukraine. The sanctions will not affect Russia a great deal, but the oil price will shoot up, and the sanctions are going to cause inflation. The Russians have the two resources that make them profit during inflation, and that is gold and oil. They have 2,300 tons of gold, and they produce 10 million barrels of oil a day. They have already profited about $13 billion just in the last month. This is also going to affect the process of chip making in China for tech and car manufacturing because of palladium and purified neon gas that comes out of Odessa, the military port of Ukraine on the Black Sea, which is now shut down. Russia and Ukraine are responsible for one-third of global exports of wheat and other grains, and all of that is being cut off from the West. Almost overnight, one-third of the global wheat supply has been redirected from Western countries to China. Ukraine has just shut its ports as the conflict threatens grain supplies. We are already seeing countries such as India turning to Brazil for soy oil amid the Ukraine crisis because 80% of sunflower oil coming out of Ukraine will not be available anymore. Yet the Brazil farmers brace for potential fertilizer pinch due to the Ukraine crisis. Bayer, a producer of herbicides used to kill weeds on farms has declared force majeure that could threaten supplies for months. The global petrochemical agriculture is collapsing, and this is by design. Kissinger said, control oil and you control nations. Control food and you control the people. We are witnessing the acceleration of the takeover of global food supply so that you will own nothing. You will eat bugs and you will be happy. This is the World Economic Forum's agenda. Of course, the wheat prices soar because the exporting giant Ukraine and Russia are clashing. It is not just the energy prices that are taken to the next level. Food is the real issue. Ukraine is a major exporter of corn, much of it destined for China and the European Union. It also competes with Russia to supply wheat to major buyers such as Egypt and Turkey. The ports in the Azov and Black Sea so far seem not to have been damaged, but they are closed. This is the shutdown of the food supply for tons of people. Many more challenges will continue to intensify, 
whether we want to accept this or not. It is important to be in awareness and understanding that the divine has a plan. We are in the midst of this pivotal time where the old world is still apparent as the new divine matter grows within our very bodies. The time has come for the next step of human destiny, the new idesic species. It is up to us not to comply, yet have compassion towards others no matter where they are at on their evolutionary path of consciousness. Every day I must reinforce my resolve to move forward on my evolutionary path towards the new species. From hell on earth to paradise on earth. We are building what many said was impossible. The evolution of how we create and travel starts here. Please consider joining us in our consciousness community at the edge of the town of Popayan in southern Colombia. This is an invitation for a long-term stay at Cascada Café Retiro in Colombia. The insanity continues to intensify, and there is no end in sight. I believe that now, there are individuals who are ready to leave their country of origin, but just don't know where to start. There is absolutely nowhere to hide. Having said that, in Popayan there is good food growth throughout the year. The temperate mountain climate is 22 to 26 degrees Celsius during the day and 13 to 18 degrees Celsius at night. And it is like this all year round, which makes life very comfortable here. Please share this information with your friends and loved ones. Uprooting yourself is certainly not for everyone. I have the possibility of making this difficult process just a little bit easier. There is a guest house for long-term stay while you are looking for property of your own. Pets are welcome and there is internet. The airport, the bus station and the city are only 13 kilometers away. Will you join us in this paradise on earth? We welcome all conscious individuals. If your soul is pushing you forward, please consult www.freedomtravelalliance.com. I consult by phone and offer tools so that you can find your individual solution by making contact with your soul. Please share my video so that this information can reach the people who need it. My contact details are in the description below, as well as the link to Cascada Café Retiro and my website. Finally, please subscribe to my other three channels, BitChute, Odyssey, and Crowdbunker. All of my videos are not available on YouTube. Infinite Love.